Another war in the Middle East is something that most of the world does not want. But the slow motion slide towards one shows no signs of stopping as Iran continues to defy all calls to halt its nuclear development program. A low-level proxy war has begun by running for some time now, has been running for some time now, with the targeted assassination of Iranian nuclear scientists widely believed to have perpetrated, been perpetrated by Israel in retaliatory attacks on Israel diplomats in India, Thailand, Georgia, carried out by Iranians last week. Few people believe that the sanctions recently imposed by the United States and Europe on Iranian oil exports and the country's financial institutions will bring, its, bring the raging to its senses. Diplomats point out that sanctions alone have never worked, again, worked even against economies far weaker than Iran's. As Iran moves more of its nuclear resources deep underground, where they will be invulnerable to conventional weapons, there is a growing belief that Israel, which is, has the most to fear from a belligerently hostile nuclear-armed Iran, will soon take matters into its own hands with a direct attack on Iran's nuclear facility. While they deal with the immediate threat, while they that might deal with the immediate threat, although even the outcome would be by no means certain, it is hard to see that the longer term consequences would be anything but dire. Uh, Iran insists that its nuclear program, which has which was begun by the Shah of Iran before he was thrown by radical Islamists in eight in nineteen seventy nine, is for the entirely peaceful and prudent purpose of providing an alternative domestic energy source. Almost no one believes that. The program was developed under cover of secrecy and duplicity, hidden from inspections by in to the International Atomic Energy Agency and in defiance of the non-proliferation treaty to which Iran has acceded. Iran has spurned all offers of assistance that would enable it to have a program to develop a peaceful nuclear program without the danger of the country also developing a capacity to build nuclear weapons. US President Barack Obama has said that sanctions must be given time to work and he and other top figures in the administration have also put unprecedented pressure on Israel not to actively not to act precipitately. The president is treading a fine line here, having lost heart over the incursion into Iraq and becoming increasing disillusioned about the continuing war in Afghanistan, the US people may have no appetite for a further major conflagration in the Middle East. But the president is also acutely sensitive, particularly a presidential in a presidential election year to the pro-Israel vote in the US and that, to that end has said that the US continues to stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel. The danger is that such a commitment may pull him unwillingly into an armed conflict if Israel decides to act. The US has already acted to belligerent noises from Iran about blocking the Straits of Hormuz to prevent exports of oil to the West by deploying an aircraft carrier group to the region. To all of this, New Zealand is largely an interested bystander. A nuclear-armed Iran is in no one's interest, not least because it would set off an arms race among Arab countries who are deeply suspicious of Iran's ambitions. To that extent, the New Zealand can, to what it, the extent New Zealand can, it should support internationally agreed sanctions, assistance in any military action. Should it incur, it would probably be beyond the country capacity, but it is not something we should consider.